All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're talking about beam quality, especially for x-ray radiography and CT imaging. So if that sounds good to you, if you're not quite sure what things impact beam quality on the system or how can you measure it, this is the video for you. Stick around all the way to the end. Make sure you don't miss anything good. Coming up. First, we're gonna talk about what is beam quality? Quality is actually how we describe the x-ray spectrum. It's actually just saying that the x-ray beam coming out from one setting and a different setting actually have a different quality. So that means they're going to pass through the patient differently. And specifically, the things that we talk about most are the x-ray spectra. So saying beam quality means that the shape of the x-ray spectra is changing. We typically draw the spectra with the number of photons on the y-axis then the KEV or the energy on the x-axis. And the idea here is we can look at the area under the curve. Some of those x-ray photons will stop in the patient and others will be measured on the detector. In general, if we have more x-ray photons, that means a higher radiation dose. It also means a lower noise in our images. And if there's a change in beam quality, that means there's a change in the shape of this beam. Here's a couple beams that have different number of x-rays under the curves, but they also have different shapes. So the softer beam means there's more x-rays in the softer beam that are lower energy x-rays. And the harder beam means there's more energies that are higher energy x-rays. So in the softer beam, the x-rays are more likely to get stopped within the patient. And in the harder beam, the x-rays are more likely to pass through the patient. The higher energy x-rays are more likely to pass through a given thickness of the same material. Now that we know what beam quality is, why do I care about it? I care about it for a few different reasons. As a technologist, you're the one that's in charge of the acquisition and of the actual parameters that are being used. So when there's a trade-off between the contrast and the penetration, for instance, that is something that you need to be watching out for. And on your images, if you're using a relatively softer beam, you'll typically end up with higher contrast, such as you can see in the image on the left, have a harder beam, you'll typically end up with reduced contrast. It's especially true if you're talking about bone, iodine, things that have high Zs. Those have high contributions from the photoelectric effect, and that really increases as you go to lower energies. You need to get penetration. If x-rays aren't making it through the patient, you're not gonna get a good image. Even if you turn up the MA, zero times 100 is still zero. So first off, make sure you can get enough penetration, and then you wanna start thinking about going to a softer beam such that you can get higher contrast. It's gonna be dependent on the clinical task that you're trying to accomplish here. See our video on KVP for more description of different standard tasks in X-ray imaging and the KVP that you would want to use for those types of tasks. Beams preferred when you can't get enough penetration, preferable from the perspective of beam hardening artifacts in CT. Know what beam quality is now? We know we definitely care about it a lot, right guys? And we care about it because it changes the image quality a lot. We talk about what factors actually influence the beam quality. Off KVP, this is the factor that you're mostly gonna be changing on your system in order to influence the beam quality. And when you change KVP, you're changing both the quality, also the quantity. So the number of x-rays or the area under the curve in the x-ray spectrum, that's what we call the quantity or the number of x-rays. And the quality is actually the shape of the x-ray spectra. Go to higher KVP, you're changing the shape of your x-ray spectra. Change the KVP alone without changing any other parameters, you're actually gonna end up with higher quantity of x-rays and also a different beam quality. And they love to throw at you on the registry type exam. Does MA influence the beam quality? This, ask yourself, will the shape of the x-ray spectrum change if I change the MA? The answer is no. The number of photons will change, but not the shape. It's going to be scaling the same distribution either up or down, but its general shape is going to stay the same when you change the MA. Example of two different MAs, 100 MA and 200 MA, and you can see they have the same shape, it's just that the scale has changed. 
So the beam quality is actually not changed. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the target material and its influence on the beam quality. So if we remember, we have electrons, they come out of a hot filament and then they're gonna get slammed into the anode. They're gonna get pulled across by a KVP and then they're gonna get slammed into the anode. As they travel into the anode, they will interact in characteristic and Bremsstrahlung interactions and out come the X-ray photons. Those X-ray photons have to pass through the anode material. Since they have to pass through the anode material on their way out, that anode material is actually gonna influence the quality of the beam because some of those X-ray photons are going to get attenuated within the anode material itself. We talk about the impact of filtration on the X-ray beam. This is the case where we'll add thin sheets of metal, for instance, in order to stop some of the lower energy X-rays. Why would we want to do that, you ask? It's because those lower energy X-rays actually can deposit dose in the patient, but there's a pretty small chance that they're actually going to make it all the way through the patient and give you contrast on your image. So since they're not very efficient at generating image quality, we'd like to attenuate them. We can think about the input spectra and this plot here that we have for our X-ray spectra, we can think about that being the input X-ray spectra. And then it has an average energy that we show here in this dotted line. And then after the X-rays pass through, we can think then about the output spectra. So the output spectra for the X-rays after they pass through that thin sheet of metal is actually going to be less X-rays, right? So we call that lower flux or a lower exposure is going to be making it through. But if we look at the average energy of that beam, it's actually going to be higher now, right? So we have less X-rays, so lower flux, but higher average energy. Now you know the factors that affect beam quality as well. Finally, how can we measure it? In reality, it's actually quite difficult to make a measurement of the beam quality or the distribution of X-rays over given energy. So in the clinic, instead of trying to make a very sophisticated measurement like that, we actually just need something that is a surrogate for the beam quality or something that we can measure that actually will change when the beam quality changes. Purpose, we use something called the half value layer. And then how we measure the half value layer, we start with an ion chamber. See our video on ion chambers if you don't know how they work, but the X-rays are gonna come down, they're gonna ionize the air, those electrons are gonna get amplified, the signal's gonna come out, and that signal's gonna be proportional to the exposure. First off, we do that with no filtration in the beam. It gives us our exposure without filtration. We're gonna use that to what we call normalize or divide the other data by this number because this is our baseline values for the exposure with no filtration. Then we slide in a little bit of filtration there. We make a measurement again, and then we take the new measurement of the exposure divided by the original measurement of the exposure where there was no filtration and then that'll give us a point on the curve. And the curve we're actually looking at is essentially the relative exposure on the y-axis and on the x-axis, we're looking at the material thickness. Then we'll slide in another sheet and then we'll get another point on the curve after we make a measurement. We'll do that again. And after we have a few of these measurements, you can see now that the points are actually making a curve we can fit that curve and then we can calculate parameters on that curve. The most popular one is called the half value layer. Go to where the value is one half of the original exposure. We'll draw a line, see where that line intersects our curve, and then we'll draw another line down. Draw that line down, we get what's called the half value layer. So that's the thickness of material that's required to attenuate one half of the x-rays. We also talk about additional half values. So we measured a single half value layer in that experiment we were talking about doing one half value. And the equation is the fraction out of the x-rays or the exposure that we're going to measure is one divided by two raised to the power of the number of half value layers you're talking about. So 
each time you can think about taking one half and then multiplying it by another one half for each half value layer. So if you start with a single half value layer, you have one half of the x-rays making it through. Second half value layer, you take one half times one half, you get one quarter. Third half value layer, you multiply that one quarter by one half, you now get one eighth, so 12.5%. And then if you do a fourth time, the fourth time you get 1 16th or 6.25%. And that's the general idea for half value layers if you wanna look at multiple half value layers. How can we use half value layer to tell us anything about the beam quality? So I have a soft spectra and a harder spectra here. Soft spectrum's on the left, the harder spectrum's on the right. If we talk about a half value layer measurement, we're gonna have a significantly attenuated set of x-rays. So I show that here in orange. And then we also have an attenuated set of x-rays shown here in orange for the higher KVP. But the relative fraction or change is actually going to be different for the lower energy spectrum compared with the higher energy spectrum. So we use that change in the half value layer to indirectly tell us about the change in beam quality. From what we talked about before, if we change the MA, do we expect there to be a change in half value layer? The answer is no, we don't expect there to be a change in half value layer, because changing the MA, we're just going to scale these curves, so there's not gonna be any change in the half value layer. Now you've mastered everything there is to know about beam quality half value layers, but do you know about beam quality and how it's changed as a function of target angle? If you don't yet know that, you're going to want to see our video on the heel effect coming up.